In this video, we talk about four different data types in R, and we also talk about arithmetic and logical operators. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. First things first, I wanna go ahead and assign a few variables so I can do some examples. So I've got X, Y, and Z here. So I'm gonna run these lines real quick to assign those variables. And you'll notice in the global environment, I see my variables and their values that I have assigned to them. And also in the console, we see that my lines have run. And if you didn't know already, if you put your cursor on a line and you hit Control Enter, it'll go ahead and execute or run that particular line. So there we go, variables assigned. Now the first data type we wanna talk about is numeric. And one way we can go ahead and check data types is with the class function. So we're gonna be using the class function to check the different data types. So let's go ahead and check the data type of X, Y, and Z. And we'll notice down here in the console that all three are numeric data types. Now numeric means, or it's the default computational data type. Now computational simply means you can do math with it and you can compare things with it. So there you go. Um, it includes decimals or floats, so like 5.5 .5 up here. And it also includes integers, which don't have decimals um, assigned to them. So like three and four are kind of like integers, but R does something kind of interesting. It stores everything automatically as having a decimal place, even though you don't see that decimal place. And we'll talk more about that later on. If you want it to be a pure integer, you'll see how to do that. So I'm just pointing that out there. Numeric is how we can do math with it. So all numbers are numeric unless you convert them into a string and you'll see that later on too. Anyway, moving on down here, doing math in R is very simple, self-explanatory type stuff. You've been doing math since kindergarten. So same concept applies here. So you can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponents. You can also find the remainder. So in this case, we're finding the remainder of Z divided by X or Z mod X. So we can run that real quick. Uh, we can also do Z divided by Y rounded down with this right here, the percentage sign, division sign, percentage sign. Uh, boom, just like that. So there we go. Math with numeric data type. Very simple, easy to understand. Now we get into integers here, which is a numeric, but there's no decimal, right? We kind of talked about that. We kind of see that over here, but like I was saying, uh, this isn't actually an integer at this point in time as we're about to see. So let's go ahead and check the class of X. So we see numeric again. So if we do this question right here, so is numeric X, run that, we see true, it is numeric, uh, but is it an integer? Let's check, false, it is not an integer. See, I told you R stores this not as an integer, but as a numeric, and there's like a decimal, even though you can't see it. But what we can do, if we do want it as an integer, we can coerce it uh, by using an as.integer function right here. So let's go ahead and run that real quick. And you'll notice in the global environment, X updated to three and L, capital L. And that means that it is an integer. The L stands for like long character or something like that. And I'll go ahead and link to the post about it uh, down below if you're interested in why it's L and not something else. That's kind of interesting, I guess. But anyway, if you see an L there, that means it's actually an integer. It's not just a numeric. So let's go ahead and check the class real quick of X. So now we see that the class of X is an integer. Okay, so it has changed to integer. Uh, now let's see, is it numeric? Yep, it's still numeric. So all integers are still numeric. So you can still do math with them, you can still compare them and things like that. However, not all numerics are integers, okay? That's the difference. So all integers are numerics, however, not all numerics are integers. Got it, hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, we can go ahead and check if it's an integer now. And we see true, it is an integer. Uh, we can also coerce, coerce it the other way. So we can convert it from an integer into just a numeric. So run that real quick, check the class, and we see that it is a numeric still. And also if we look over here in our global environment, we see that that L has vanished over here. Also while assigning variables, we can go ahead and throw that L in there to make it a, an integer right away. So if I run that real quick, we see the L is there 
and then I can check the class real quick and we see that it is an integer. Okay, so that's a difference right there between numeric and integers and kind of how those work together. Hopefully that makes some sense. If you're familiar with integers versus floats and decimals, then hopefully you, you see how to do it within R. All right, moving on down here, let's check the class of Z real quick. So this is numeric. Now, again, remember Z is 5.5, so that is a decimal place, right? So that is a numeric, a float. And so if we convert that to an integer, we see that it gets rid of the decimal and it throws that L in there, which of course lets us know that this is an integer. So now if I check the class of Z, I see that it is indeed an integer. And for the time being, I'm gonna go ahead and reset it back to the numeric of 5.5. All right, so hopefully that's making some sense once you start working with numbers, it'll start to make sense what's a numeric versus an integer and all, all that type of stuff. So anyway, coming on down here, we get into the next data type, which is logical or logical operation, which is basically true false statements. So you'll use this with like loops and if and else statements and all that type of stuff. So you can go ahead and do comparisons. So, you know, like is X greater than Y? False. Is X less than Y? True. So we've got greater than, less than, we got greater than or equal to, we got less than or equal to, we got equals to, and you'll notice that it is two equal sign, uh, not just one. You need two in order to do a comparison. So we run that, we get the answer false x does not equal to y because this is false. Uh, we also have the not equals, so x does not equal to y, right? So if we run that, we see that it is true because x does not equal to y, right? All right, we can get into parentheses and using ands and ors and uh, running all sorts of operations this way. So this is how you run an and statement with just one and sign. And an or statement is just one uh, pipe right here. So other languages use two signs like that right there, or they might even type out and or or. However, R does not do that. R is just one, one symbol, one sign in order to represent and or or. Uh, but anyway, we can go ahead and run this. So X is greater than Y and X equals to three. So you could run that false. So how about X is less than Y and X is equal to three. So that one's true right there. Uh, we can also throw in the exclamation point right here for not. Right, so we had a not up here with the exclamation. We can throw a not here. So basically what this is saying is X is not equal to three. Let's go ahead and run this line and we get a false. We'll run this line, true, 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 and so on. Hopefully that's making some sense. If you know and and or, it, it's you know pretty simple to do. All right, the next data type I wanna go ahead and talk about are characters. So these are you know words, strings, etc. So to do it, we can just assign a new, new variable. We've got sentence and I'll go ahead and assign it. So let me run that real quick. And we'll see in my environment, I have sentence one. This is a string of characters, okay? We can go ahead and check the class then. We see that it is a character down here, right? Uh, we got sentence two then, throw that in there. Uh, we can go ahead and concatenate our two uh, characters or strings together. So we got sentence one, sentence two and you can concatenate with paste. So we throw that in there and it combines the two strings together. There's also the sprintf function you can go ahead and use. So other languages use the sprintf function and you can Google it. There's a bunch of different options with these uh, percentage signs and letters and how, how all that stuff works together. But basically the percentage sign and letter gets replaced by whatever you go ahead and throw in you know, past, past this particular comma. So run this real quick. So we see that this is a string of characters, is the character, and three is the numeric. So it doesn't make much sense, but hopefully you can see that this was replaced by sentence one, and this was replaced by the X right here. So that's, that's how that worked. And again, you can Google it. There's, you can do a bunch of stuff with that sprintf function. You can also do substrings, so you can do like, bits and pieces of strings. So let's run that real quick. So basically I'm going to sentence one up here, starting on character five, stopping on character 11. And this is what I'm left with right here. So you can mix and match there. Let's go ahead and check our class of X again real quick. So we're running with an integer. Let's say we wanna go ahead and convert it 
into a, a character. So we do X as character X. So run that real quick. And we'll notice over here in the environment area, we have some quotes around our number now, which basically means that it's a string or a character in this particular case. So if we go ahead and check the class of it now, we will see that the number three is actually a character or a string now instead of a, a numeric or an integer. So that's, you can convert numbers into characters. Now there's other data types as well. There's complex, there's vectors, there's matrices, there's lists, there's data frames. And I'll have more videos on those other data types. They're more complicated and a lot more to them. Uh, but these are like the three main types right here. We got the numeric, we got the integers, we have logical, and then we have character. So I guess that's four that I went through in this particular video. And I think that's enough for this video. We went through a lot of stuff. I threw a lot at you. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.